All right. Good, good afternoon. Shall we uh, I say the pledge and uh, sing, the, uh, sing the song? I pledge allegiance to the flag and the United States of America and to the Republic of Poland, which stands one nation and the United States of America and the justice for all. God bless America. Inspirational moment for us. Okay. Okay. If you could erase all the mistakes of your past, you would also erase the wisdom of your present. Remember the lesson and not the disappointment. And this one is in honor of our guest speaker today. Life is like a book. Some chapters are sad. Some are happy. All right. Before we get to our um, speaker, just. Might as well give, give us an update of what happened on this day throughout history. Um, so this was the day that the first steam-powered ferry boat, the Juliana, and really I put that in there because my granddaughter is Juliana, designed by John Stevens, began operation between Hoboken and New York. So still operating to this day, not the Juliana, but a, but a ferry. This was the day the Daughters of American Revolution was founded in Washington, D.C. This was the day that Apollo 7, the first man of uh, mission, launched carrying astronauts Wally Sherrard, Don Esty, and Walter Cunningham. And this was also the date that uh, President Reagan met with uh, Gorbachev in Reykjavik, uh, a famous meeting where he uh, laid down the law and walked out. So uh, I guess that kind of leadership is, uh, is a good thing. Um, I have a book recommendation in honor of, of our... Uh, <laughs> our this was on my desk when, and I, I thought this was a good thing to share. Anybody hear this book, From Strength to Strength? It's written by Arthur Brooks. And the subtitle is Finding Success, Happiness, and Deep Purpose in the Second Half of Life. And it's a really good book about, I, I belong to a men's club, and we read this. Um, you know, when you go from being a VIP to a FIP, you know what that means? Go from being, in Florida, everybody was a VIP. Very important person. Now they're FIP, formerly important person. Nobody cares, nobody cares what you ever did with your life, you know, which is a good thing. So anyway, uh, this was a book that, that it may address that trauma that, that you have in the second part of your life. But I would highly recommend it. Very, very, very informative. So uh, with that, Ken, I'll turn it over to you and you can introduce our guest. I have to say this might be one of the more circuitous <laughs> routes that we've taken to try to have a, a guest here to speak to us. We actually started last spring, and it's just a, an indication of how complicated we are in our societies today with uh, everybody so busy and so many different things going on that we moved from somewhere around March or April, I guess, when we first talked, uh, then, then skipped the summer when I wasn't going to be here to even hear her, and then uh, here we are in the fall already. So uh, this is Jennifer Long, and... Uh, Jennifer is the director of the uh, Mason Library, and it's a system, actually. And uh, she got her Bachelor of Science in Public Administration at Kutztown, and then her MLS in Library Sciences there also. And to our benefit, she's been at the library since 2005 at Easton. Mm -hmm. So we have the benefit not only of her, uh, her understandings, but her expertise over a long period of time and her wisdom that she's developed over that time <laughs> dealing with it. What is a big staff? I thought one way uh, to introduce her might be to just read what I found was the mission statement. I hope it's sure. okay. Uh, from, <laughs> from the internet. And it's uh, to promote literacy. Interested in that. Mm -hmm. Advance lifelong learning. Interested in that. To contribute to the development of an active an informed community of citizens while well, we're interested in that. <laughs> and uh, we've actually, as a club, uh, made uh, contributions to the library mm -hmm. over the course of years. 
and I'm sure there'll be other opportunities for that. So at many levels, we've had connections with the library, which is in many people's minds, the, the heart, beating heart of the community. And I especially feel that way because I told Jennifer that my uh, youngest son is now working in library sciences at his elementary school. So we should fourth grade to that. So I keep hearing a little bit about libraries and it's picked my interest in having Jennifer here. It tells more about our wonderful Eastland library. Mm -hmm. So Jennifer. Great. Thank you. Do you want do you want me to stand or doesn't doesn't matter. I I can stand. I because I, I brought I certainly brought a whole host of of things to uh to share with everyone. So let me just move over here. Well, good, well, I guess good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me. And uh, yes, it was quite the uh, quite the hunt and peck to find an open date um, for uh, me to come speak at your club. So I'm very excited to be here. And um, I, I do have to admit, on Monday when Ken said, "I'll see you tomorrow," I thought. Tuesday, I can't. I have a personal commitment. So, um, but then we realized that we it was definitely here for Wednesday. So it it all worked out. Um, I am uh, my name is Jennifer Long. I am the library director since two thousand five. But something my biography didn't say. I've actually worked at the library um, since I was fourteen years old. Um, in 1988. So uh, the live, I've been working at the library for more than half of my life, with, which is either an awesome achievement and accomplishment, or, <laughs> or some days maybe, maybe I think, gee, what else is out there? But I am honored to be a part of our library and our community for so long. Um, I, you heard about my college experience, but I am Born and raised here in Easton, a proud graduate of Easton High School. Um, Friday nights, you can find me out at Cottingham Stadium rooting on the Red Rovers. Even though I do not have any children in the school, um, I, my husband and I enjoy uh, football, enjoy high school football, and, and uh, that's what we like to do on Friday nights. Um, the the library, I think I, I was trying to think when I spoke to this group last, I think it may have, what was that? You were Jennifer Stocker when I had you here. I was Jennifer Stocker. Yes. Okay. So my name switched six years ago. So probably when I was here then was more than six years, yep. uh, more than six years ago. So, um, but uh, that being said, I'm I'm really really happy to be here again. But um, the library, where through the pandemic, it was an opportunity for everything to stop and pause the library was closed we had we had reduced hours we were giving books out curbside we were quarantining all returns that came through um certainly it's um memories that will last uh, last for us for for history for future years to come back and look at to see but that could have been enough really been the end of public libraries and the foundation, because we I think we've all adapted our lives a little bit differently since that time. That being said, I, I sit back and I am amazed by how much we've come out of the pandemic, um, even stronger and even more vibrant and just much more of a place in our community than even before. Um, for example, this past summer reading program um, all together now. Uh, the theme was meant to bring people back together and celebrate being amongst one another. Uh, we saw a record number of children and families participate in our summer reading program. And when I talk about we, I, I do want to preface, it's not just the main library downtown, but this also includes our Palmer branch in Palmer, um, in Palmer Township. Um, we do have two locations within Easton, but we saw a record number of programs, record number of the need for programs. Um, we now have a calendar program online that advertises all of our programs, and uh, people can register right from those right from the website. Um, and most most times, our programs fill up as soon as we open registration. It really is quite remarkable how much. The library is has become a part of every everyone's lives again, um, where it really 
could have gone, could have, could have been much different for us. Um, but what I wanted to talk about a little bit more today is um, I can certainly talk about our children's program and so much of our children's um, activities, but I, what I do think at times is just our own enjoyment for, for adults or parents or, or seniors, wherever you may be in your life, because I think people think of the library, think, oh, they do story time that's so great for the kids, or, oh, there's a, a book club for kids, or there's this program for the kids. And absolutely, I, I'm proud of those programs, but just as we, just, there are things that people wonder, like, well, what, what could I do? And, oh, I don't want to read, or I'm not a reader. What else is there? And we have really, um, improved and added so much of so much programming for adults that um, I think is just as important for our own uh, work-life balance that we have and these programs are all free. Um, for example, uh, let, I'll talk about some of the di some of the digital. Um, one of the items that we offer for free if you have a library card, we have access to both the Morning Call and the Easton Express for free through our website. Yes, it's not the same as reading the newspaper, touching the paper. I, I, I appreciate that. But I know looking at the newspapers, I certainly appreciate the local news. I appreciate their uh, what they do in our communities. But um, the subscription services can be tough or getting the newspaper delivered at home is tough. And then you go on their website and there's a paywall. So you can't read the story. And especially some stories that I think we should be reading. And I, I understand the, the need for that from the newspaper standpoint. But um, how, how can you see those? You can see those through us, just with a library card. And I actually brought flyers about how that, how that works. Um, and you get the full article. And if there's a picture, you get the full picture. You can print it out. You can email it to your friends. Um, but that's, that's something that uh, we we have at the library that it's a service we offer. And no matter how many times I come out to service clubs and try to talk about it, it still doesn't get the use that it, that it could or should. And I, um, I'm like, that's my mission is to make everybody aware of the online newspapers. Um, we do have something else. I do have information about all of our e-resources. And when I say e, I mean electronic or digital. Um, of course, we have a collection of online books, online audiobooks, online magazines. Um, if those are items that you just check out electronically. Yes, you need some sort of device, whether it's a laptop, a Kindle, an iPad, tablet, or even a phone. You would need that to be able to read those materials, but those materials are free for you uh, for you to use and to look at at any time. Um, we do have a collection of databases that we offer, um, again, for free to you. There might be some creativity databases, just some history databases, um, or other, uh, other things like that that are available for you to use just when, just to grow yourself or to, uh, to look or to wonder yourself. Um, one of the other areas, I'm, I'm sure most of you are familiar with our Mark's Room of Local History, um, which is one of the largest area, largest collections of local history in the area. Um, our local history collection continues to grow and grow. And one thing during the pandemic that did happen is um, fam when, you, when we were at home, most people started working on their family genealogies because what else was there to do? So we have such a great collection of family genealogies and our local history room. Um, it, there are times that, um, that I, I think we have so much resources here for people, for people to come in and use. That's one area though, that you cannot access online. You do need to come in and see. Um, we do actually now have a full run of the Easton High School Russia Fay yearbook. For those of you that may have gone to Easton, Russia Fay is the name of the yearbook from Easton High School. We have a full run from 1905 through uh, last year. 
which is which is great. Um, that's that's something. There was a couple years that we had a hard time getting our hands on, but um, we we found them online and such, and we were able to fill that collection, which is really exciting. Um, in the in the live um, in the Marks room, we do have the Easton flag, which I'm sure many of you know. Um, what what the Easton flag is the the beautiful flag um, that it's, uh, is is there on display for everybody to see. Um, last week we actually two weeks ago we actually had all of the fourth graders from Palmer Elementary School come in to see the flag and they made their own East version of the Easton flag, which is excellent. Again, it just keeps continuing to share that local history and that pride. Um, that we have of being here in Easton. Um, one other er one other area that I did want to talk about, I'm going to cheat and look at this. When people say to me, well, I'm not really a reader. I'm not looking for books. I don't want to listen to an audio book. Um, I'm not even a magazine person or such. We have a whole collection we call Beyond Books. Um, and these are just things that we have at the library that. Um, or just as it says, beyond books. We now check out board games, uh, video games, museum passes, um, mobile hotspots, and laptops that can only be used within the library, but we do have laptops. Um, something that we, this was even before the pandemic, but board games, when I say board games, we all love the traditional monopoly or life or such, but we have, we have some different types of board games um, things that you may not be as familiar with just to help grow our own grow, grow your own interest and your own experience playing some different games. Um, and our museum passes, we actually, um, not just us, but other libraries have partnered with different types of museums or places of interest. And we, we actually have the museum passes and you come to us and check them out. So, um, for example, my husband and I went to the Battleship New Jersey um, about a year ago. It's something we may have bought, may have bought our own passes. Certainly, it's something we could do. But because the library had these passes, we made it a destination, and we had a, a very great day exploring this beautiful uh, battleship there outside of Philadelphia. But we do have a great collection of museum passes that that you can check out. And did I mention they were for free? <laughs> they are for free for, for you to check, uh, check out. Um, just a few other things. Um, if you've ever been in our library, if you've ever been in the basement meeting room, one of the, one of the uh, gems that we have there that most people don't know about is we have a gorgeous Steinway piano. Mm -hmm. um, I, do not play the piano. I wish I did, but this piano, it's just gorgeous um, and very, very well cared for. And we've been, um, we've been looking for people who could play the piano, who could help um, fill the room with the beautiful sounds. And we actually do have um, three music, three music programs this fall um, that are sponsored by our friends at the library. We had one this past week where it was a Disney Disney sing along event with the piano, which was great fun for the uh, for the families. Um, we have a jazz concert coming up in November, and then we have a more traditional piano concert coming up in December. And again, all of these programs are free at the at the library for anyone to attend. Um, finally, I, 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 just one more thing to mention. Um, that probably the number one question I get asked whenever I'm out and speaking is when is the fall, when is your next book sale? When is your next book sale? Well, I have the flyers for the book sale. Our next book sale is um, Thursday, November 9th through Monday, November 13th. I have some of the flyers here and I can I certainly can share more handouts about it. Um, we because of the volume of donations that the library receives, we only take donations on Wednesdays and Saturdays. If you really can't make it either of those two days, you can. we can make arrangements, but that's the day that we have extra volunteers on hand to help sort through all the donations. Um, 
but our book sale is the library's uh, greatest fundraiser. Um, it's, um, it might not be the biggest book sale in the area, but um, proudly it's one of the best. We have an awesome, awesome group of volunteers who carefully screen, organize, um, and really put together our book sale for us, which we, we could not do it on our own. So we are very, um, very appreciative of the friends group and what they do. But um, this is, if you've never come to our book sale, um, circle these dates and come uh, book sale as $2 and even less. Um, it is a fundraiser, but we're also, uh, it's also the value about pushing the pushing books into the hands, getting people to read, enjoy enjoying books, adult books, children's books, DVDs, um, some puzzles people donate to us. But that's really our excitement coming up, coming up in another month here. Um, that's really all like the formal presentation, but I'm here, I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, yes, I, I'm part of a book club too from, through the ski club that I belong oh, to. Oh, great! And every month we read a different book. Uh, I'm just wondering. You mentioned about uh, about uh, electronics. Yeah. If there isn't a book, I, I check every month. Okay. To see if the title is actually available, like in not in paperback, but you know, in paper form. Mm -hmm. Turn the pages. But are some books that are not available in paper form, are they also available electronically? Absolutely. Yep. And, I had, and how would I find, because I'm constantly, oh, okay, thank you. I, I, can, I, I, can, show, I can show you um, where, if you go to the e-library there um, and go right to um, Libby is the, the platform name, you can search for the book. Um, one of the other, one of the other um, items that I, I neglected to mention, um, our library is, of course, the Easton Library, which is the main library in the Palmer Branch. We have a direct partnership with the Allentown and Bethlehem Public Libraries. And we have a direct partnership with the five libraries in Monroe County and the Bangor Public Library. So that means, um, ideally, one, two, seven, eight, um, eight, other eight other public libraries in our area um, if you're looking for a particular book, um, you can search. And if the book is at the Pocono Mountain Public Library up in Toby Hanna, that we can send for that directly. It will be here tomorrow for you. Um, now, the only thing that does not get immediately <laughs> circulated that way is anything brand new. So if it is a brand new item, all of the libraries we, those are not eligible for that immediate transfer. Um, but anything that's um, not new, which is about nine months um, behind, um, it'll come, it, it will be directly transferred. So that's something that being able to resource share that openly. Um, we've always had interlibrary loans. Some of you may have used that service before where we will ask any library not just locally, but throughout the state or the country to send the item to you for your use. We will still enter a library loan, but as we all know, shipping costs, um, we would ship the item even through media mail would be expensive. So we uh, being able to do this direct loan, like I said, eight libraries that I can look for the item for you. And if they have it, it'll be here tomorrow because we have daily delivery um, between all of those. So. On the uh, research room with the uh, local history, mm -hmm. uh, online, you can just go in and type in uh, what you want to find? Um, yes, we uh, everything that's in our local history room is cataloged. So if you're, if you want to look up um, Easton Monument or something, you, you can search that and it will give you a list of books. However, those books can only be used within that Marks room. Um, and can only be used at the library. The Marks Room is a climate controlled environment. We purposely, we purposely have the climate regulated to protect the humidity from the, from the materials in that room. So I, as I like to explain to the fourth graders, we keep the temperature in that room perfect all year long, whether it's the hottest day in summer or the coldest day in winter. Um, 
that room is um, is controlled. But yes, you can come in and we can help you search. Um, our we have the uh, staff that's trained to work in that room have a outstanding knowledge of local history, um, being from this area and doing their own research. So they're they're pretty good when you come in and say, I, I'm looking for information about this. They'll, they'll know how to uh, work with you. And in addition, um, people ask us, well, what about the Siegel Museum downtown? How do you work with them? What is your relationship with them? Are you in competition with them? Nothing like that. This, the Siegel Museum is, of course, they're a Northampton County collection, and they have a, a different with some of their beautiful exhibits and displays. Um, their focus is phenomenal. Where we do, what, where we work, we just work to supplement each other's collection. Where as a library, we're not going to have the items they have as a museum. They do have a library as well, of course. Um, all of their materials from their library are cataloged on our system. So you might be looking up Eastern history and you'll actually see a book in the Marks room, but then a book also at the Siegel Museum. And depending upon what you're looking for, um, you, you, you'll already be ahead of the game when you can go to the Siegel Museum and say, I looked this up, it says this book is here. So it's a great partnership between the library and the Siegel Museum. Jennifer. Yes. <laughs> On the archives of the newspaper, East and Express, mm -hmm. do you have the archives online that are available to read? No, we no, we don't. We have been looking for a partner to help us with that. However, that being said, those that online newspapers that I talked about in the beginning, um, I'll have to double check, but I think the express goes back to 88 and the morning call might go back to 90s. So there is a little bit. The morning call during COVID, early part of COVID, uh, I think it was a Father's Day weekend, they pulled all the subscribers. <clears throat> you could sign on to the morning call through your link and look at the complete history of the morning call online. Wow. And so I spent three days downloading my name, my parents' name, my mom's name, my grandparents' name, and the Eastern X in Kiwanis Club. Oh, nice. And we have tidbits of knowledge that I used to pass on every week on Zoom. Mm -hmm. That was from 1932, 1928, when he used to pull on it. But I did never found out where I could find the Express archives. <laughs> They're yeah. at the Signal Museum. They have the complete uh, archives of the Express. But it's not online, is it? No, they're not online. Not online. And I don't know. I don't think they have the complete collection because we have some as well. Okay. Um. When the Express was closing their building, um, there were articles and negatives that were given between the library and Siegel. Um, we did we did digitize all of those um, all of those negatives. So we do have a phenomenal photo collection. So if you're looking for a photo of, uh, of you know what downtown might have looked like in the fifties at, at the holidays. We probably have a picture of that because of that collection from the Eastern Express. Um, yes, it was that was a quick save because <laughs> respectfully, I, I don't know what would have happened to those negatives, and I'm glad I'm glad they were found to come to either the library or the Siegel Museum because that that's our history. That's right. and once those are gone, they're they're gone. Yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. mentioned one thing. I yeah, you mentioned about the uh, the network of. Library. Yes. library. Reading a book now, it says oh, the Spalsburg Library. Yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, what I wanted to ask you was, did you ever try having classes maybe there in your facility for seniors or people who have problems with computers? Because now everything is portable. They could actually bring one with them where before people on desktops. Yes. And periodically, it might help them because things change so fast. They sure do. And yeah. I'm wondering if you ever thought about anything like that. No, I, I, I mean, we have, but, but I, I don't know that their interest is there. So if there is indeed, even if, if there is indeed an interest, we would be certainly happy to, um, happy to have some sort of instruction or uh, introduction to, 
to computers and to some of our yeah. some of our databases. I saw that because everybody's doing that today. Yes. Everybody's a little confused on some items. And it might be nice to have a class periodically. We're doing Windows one time, or we're doing Apple the other. Yes. Two months from now for an hour or two or whatever it might be. I know. I don't know. It, 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 <laughs> even even for somebody who works with it, it's confusing. Right. Um my I'm a Microsoft Word I you know, I'm a Microsoft Word girl. Right. And my team uses Google Docs. And at times I'm like, what are you doing to me? I can't open this. But I can. I just need to okay. have a little patience. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's your like, there is such a thing as a typical day in the library. What does it look like in terms of demographics and people using the library? What, what does that, what does it look mm -hmm. like throughout the box? Well, like, um, like this morning, today, today's Wednesday. Well, our heat is a little challenged right now. We have people coming out tomorrow. <laughs> so we walk, walked into the library and, ooh, it's a little chilly. Hence why I have the layers on today. Um, but we, today we have story time at 9, 10, and 11. Um, if you tried to come to the library today, you had, there was nowhere to park. Um, our, we have three story times back to back because of the demand for story time. So, and as you can imagine, um, story times, which are about 30 to 40 um, people, adults and kids, um, all under the age of five. Um, <laughs> let me let me really paint the picture. Um, all running through the library, the excitement, the, the story times. Um, so that was that was going on today, um, this morning. Um, in the meantime, I had come down to the, um, we do have an, somebody who wasn't feeling well. So I was down with staff trying to help restructure the staffing to make sure everything was appropriately uh, covered. Today is Wednesday. So people, I, I didn't observe one family who had, was bringing in boxes and boxes of donations. So that that's exciting. Our volunteers are ready to handle, uh, to handle that. Um, and it's just, but if you just take a snapshot to look around, then there's people there using the public access computers for whatever whatever they're use whatever they're using for. Um, we had we had I know we had a couple people sitting in the magazine sections paging the magazines. We had somebody paging through uh, the New York Times. It, it's just it's it's that place where everyone is welcome. Uh, it, Everyone is everyone is welcome, and we're happy to see everyone. And you use us how you need how you need to how you need to use us. So, um, how many active card holders are there? We have about thirty thousand active card holders. Which for us, our service population, and when I say that service population is who's assigned to us, we serve the Eastern Area School District. You live within the, within the Eastern Area School District. We are your home library. Um, so about 30,000 active library cards that we have, which I, I think is um, pretty fair. And we, on average, we are making about 50 to 100 new cards a day. Um, wow. it, 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 it's, I don't, like, I didn't believe that until I worked downstairs and people coming in, oh, I need to get a library card. And I think, where, 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 um, where have you been? But, um, go ahead. Do you have um, any problems with homeless or just people that come in and hang out all of them? Well, I, problem is, problem is, I guess maybe the, the subjective word there. We do we see people who come in and are at the library all day? Absolutely. Um, we are a place that's welcoming to everyone. Um, we have a, 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 a posted code, behavior code of everybody. Um, who comes in, whether you're, you know, four or 404. I mean, everyone is expected to be respectful, treat the library with respect, treat one another with respect. Um, but if somebody comes in, I mean, there are things you can't sleep within the library, but that's to, to any, to anyone. Now I'm not going to wake up a sleeping six month old. That's, but, um, really we're, we're there. We're there for everyone. Um, we do have, we have seen um, 
people come in who who have who have said they're homeless or they're living at safe harbor and they need to find somewhere to be during the day. But I do understand that there are some new um, day activities opening up within within Easton to help provide those who might need some additional services or information about work or housing. So we we haven't seen we haven't seen many people. Uh, lately, I'm, I'm hoping they're they, they're finding other additional resources. And on a day like today, when our heat isn't working the best, <laughs> it was it is a little chilly in the library. Go to Mary Muser, right? Yeah, go to, yeah, go to Mary, go to Mary Muser, or Nazareth, or or Bangor. Is your magazine? You mentioned a magazine. Yeah, I used to come in quite a lot. Just yes, reading through magazines. Is it still in the same section where it is, or is it somewhere different? Well, I guess that's my my question to you. Where it, where was it compared to? It was towards the back of the, the very back of the building. All those wooden. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's toward, it's still towards the back, and we have a uh, comfortable seating there for everyone to sit and uh, look oh. uh, look at magazines. Um, I just come in to pick up books in there, and I'm going to where the front desk yes. is to, to get the books that I put on hold or whatever like that. Yeah. But I, I I guess I never really looked back there to see if there were still magazines. Uh, there are, and actually, one of the interesting. Um, one of the interesting things, and I brought this just as a just as an aside. Um, we one of because magazines they're they're hard, they're starting to not be published. They're um, they go out of business. It's magazines sometimes are hard to to come by. But we did an analysis of ten years um, of magazine popularity because people you know we we hear it. Um, despite popular narratives that print is on its way out or even dead, we analyzed the circulation of magazines and it's actually very much alive. 72,000 um, magazines checked out between 2013 and 2023. And when you think about it, we had the, that time period during COVID where things were shut down as well. Um, we maintain a print collection of about a hundred unique titles between the main library and the Palmer branch. Um, and we do offer, there are much, much more magazines available through Libby, through that e-online resource. And there's a lot of different types of magazines on, on there as well. So it's um, on average, we check out about 260 magazines in a month, which is, which which is a lot. Now it could be just the People magazine going out every um, as soon as it comes back, but it's it was an interesting interesting uh, analysis because I you know, sometimes you think like oh are the people really looking at these? And that's not even to say how many people come in and sit and look at the magazines when their children are at programs or at other activities who might just sit and read it and then put it back on the shelf and don't check it out. Just, just a comment. Yeah. Uh, Roger asked a question about computers for seniors. I, I can tell you back many, many years ago, the library offered a computer, of course, for, for well, for anybody, basically. Yes. And we learned about Microsoft Word, mm -hmm. Excel, and some of these other things, which was a, a really big help when, when computers probably weren't that, uh, you know, that, that much of it available to right. the average person. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, we something you had we about. did, we did. When we've tried to hold them in recent, they they have just haven't been as popular, which it happens. Did you? Oh, <laughs> I'll go over here this time. Museum Fest. Can you see which ones we have online? Yes, yes, through our website, you can see which ones we have online. And um, for the electronic books, is can you? Sometimes they don't have the newest one. Right. If you purchase it, can you donate it to the library? Electronically, no, no. They, the proprietary software, unfortunately, does not does not allow that. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Someone comes in and just doesn't really quite know how to navigate being in this big library. Mm -hmm. uh, how how would they find out what to do and how to do it? We have our information or our reference professionals that can help guide your visit to the library to see 
what is it that we can assist you with or provide provide information to you? Somebody would be at the front desk. Saying the front desk, the front desk is the circulation desk. Their primary focus is to check books in and out. Not saying you can't ask them. Of course you can. But really, our information or reference professionals are more uh, adapt to. So if you said, I, I'm here and I'm looking for information about um, dogs, they can, okay, well, what is it that you're looking for? And guide you through that reference interview. Um, for the circulation staff, they, they certainly can, but there's a line of story time moms checking out and they're going to be like, come on. Like, <laughs> so we, we, we would kindly deflect you to the reference, reference staff. Yeah. I noticed when you were referring to all the libraries that you were partnering, well, partnering. with direct resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And and that is not and Muser Library, Mary Muser Library is a um, part of our direct uh, part of our as a district center, we provide resources to these libraries. Um, but Mary Muser Library, the reason why that direct resourcing, resource sharing works so well is we all share the same online catalog. Mary Muser respectfully uses a different software for checking books in and out. Um, and that is certainly, and that's from what I understand from the uh, leadership at Mary Muser, they're very happy and pleased with that software. Please. Do, that's great. At the end of the day, you have to make the decisions that work best for you. The other libraries, we all, because we use that direct software, that's what makes it so easy that if you're looking for, if you're looking for a book, um, uh, the, the cat in the hat, you can look it up. It'll show you what libraries um, in, our, in our direct sharing have it. So a lot of times without even knowing, if you put on reserve, if you reserve a book, you may not even see, because of the way the um, structure behind the scenes is going on, the system's going to say, okay, they asked for this book. It's sitting on the shelf at Allentown. So that's going to get pulled to come here. Um, and a lot of times people will say, oh my God, this got here so fast. I just, I just put it on hold. And even depending on when you put something on hold, if you put something on hold early this morning there's a chance you're gonna get called today that the item is in uh, because of how, uh, of the way our delivery system works and how quick it is. Hey Jennifer, you're many years at the Eastern Public Library. <laughs> What's the one book that was like, the one that uh, everybody had to have it again? What was the one that generated most excitement? <laughs> well, there, I, I could probably, I could probably do this a couple different ways. One of the, one of the books that, um just um blew just really blew up is um it's amazing when in my years when oprah when oprah was on at four o'clock on abc when she started her book club which was awesome no joke at 4 55 our phones would ring what do you have the book da, da 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 and we we knew it was an Oprah book club and that was every month like you could set your watch to it um that was and again regardless of your thoughts on Oprah or the books that she selected she got people reading and it, it we still chuckle about that today because whenever whoever worked that shift um we we just knew that that was that was coming. As soon as Oprah said to read this book, the phones rang. And that was a little bit different because, um, of course, we had our catalog and such, but we did a lot more phone reference. We don't, we don't do as much phone reference. Most people either research on their, themselves online or they'll come in and look up things. But yeah, that's, that's, a, fun, that's a fun memory. Bestsellers, um, the James Patterson, Danielle Steele, Nelson did me, I mean, Daniel Silva, all those popular authors. As, I mean, we have people, if you know that the book is coming out, if we know James Patterson is releasing a book in December, um, we can make an on order item for it. So that way you can get on the list. 
people people love being being on the list. Um, the um, the biography of Prince Harry that was out this past summer, that book we actually had to buy more copies of because that um, reserve list just blossomed. I remember, even though we have that direct resource, anything new, we don't share. So that's where sometimes we need to just work on it ourselves and and had to get enough books for that. But yeah, it, it does, it, everything is, um, it's great though, the, the excitement when people come in and it's great when people get the notification that their hold is in. I mean, people drop what they're doing and come pick them up. It's great. <laughs> Jennifer, when, when a book goes, a new book is published, yep. you buy them. Mm -hmm. do, they, do the publishers give you a, a good discount because it's a library? Well, we don't get the books from the publishers directly. We get the books from um, from uh, Jobber and, and okay. Immediate. But yes, we get about 40% discount. So that's yeah. better than nothing. What's the length of time the book could be uh, kept out? Three weeks, return. three weeks, and, can you renew and you can renew the item. Um, you can renew the item, and we are actually now a fine-free library. Which I know, once I say that, people think, "Oh my God, it's just bedlam and chaos." No, it's it's actually we became fine-free last a year ago, June, and I I can actually argue that we're probably a little bit tougher than we were. Um, before, if you had fines up to $10, you could still use your card. Now, as soon as that item is overdue, you cannot use your card until you return that. So you cannot use the museum passes. You cannot use our online databases. So actually, um, and, and then we don't have, you know, we've all been in that situation where, oh, I just, you know, I, I didn't get to buy the library today. Oh, now I'm going to, oh. Nobody likes nobody likes to owe any anybody, and then they're just next thing you know, twenty cents turns into two dollars and twenty cents, and it's and even though people say, oh, it's a good donation to the library, which thank you, it is. Um, it just seemed so penalizing um, for what for what we believe in in our community, which is to provide open access. Again, you can't keep doesn't mean you can keep the item forever and ever and ever because we will stop all your library privileges, but um, we have not had the problem of people not returning things. Um, we've actually had a better return of items than, than uh, we expected. So, and really fines at one time, if I was speaking to you probably 15, 20 years ago, fines were a significant part of our budget. Might've been 20, 25,000 a year. But the last few years, because our system will send you reminders, hey, your items, your items do, your items do. People were reminded, and um, and we we would only collect maybe four thousand dollars, which I'm not four thousand dollars is still four thousand dollars, but we just weren't collecting the fine money like we once did. You have you reinstituted? I know I know I put a lot of books on hold when I get notified yep. that, they're, that they're in. You don't charge. You haven't been charging fifty cents anymore. No. Is it ever going to be re? <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. I, I again, it's for us. We are fortunate that our funding base. We are. Um, uh, there's a special library tax collected by the Eastern School District that is given directly to the library. Um, that is our tax foundation. We do receive aid, state aid from Office of Commonwealth Libraries or from that's proposed by the state legislature. And then we do our own fines and uh, not fines, um, our own fundraising, such as the book sale um, that helps that helps our uh, money. Um, we also, I know this is, you know, it's maybe not polite conversation, but we've been the recipient of some really generous bequests um, recently. And uh, again, I, I know it's always an awkward conversation and maybe it, it, um, an awkward ask, but um, that is something that uh, when I get those, when I get those notifications in the mail from an attorney's office, I'm always like, oh, what's this? And then I open it and I think, oh my God, 
Mr. You know, Mr. Jones, sweet Mr. Jones left us uh, just to remember us. So, and that's where we're very, very fortunate. So, um, and we do have, the library does have um, a general endowment fund and an endowment fund for our local history, which I know to some donors, that is an important um important to know and to understand like how the library may or may not use my bequest so and certainly i can talk about that if, if anyone ever has any questions about um that information it was interesting i looked on wikipedia eastern public library and uh the building that that was funded by andrew carnegie yes mm -hmm. we are carnegie building um and we, the library itself started in 1811 in downtown Easton off of 2nd Street, very uh, near the Bachman House. Um, by the late 1800s, the community was looking to build libraries. Andrew Carnegie was providing grants to communities. We did go before, um, we, like I was there. <laughs> um, the townspeople went to, to go to uh, to Andrew Carnegie and asked for uh for a financial, a financial grant to build the library. The available land that was identified was that corner of Fifth and Church Street there, um, which was uh, a, an abandoned cemetery. Yes, it was a cemetery. Um, so at that time, families were asked to come uh, relocate loved ones and, and move loved ones to this uh, Seventh Street Cemetery. Um, and that's where they erected the the library, the Carnegie Building. Which, if you if you know, even if you don't have an eye for architecture, I, I think our building, when you look at it, you can see the Carnegie Building. But by nineteen, we opened in nineteen o three. By nineteen eleven, nineteen twelve, the library outgrown its space. So we did ask. Um, uh, again, we, um, the library asked Andrew Carnegie for an additional grant in which we actually have his correspondence where he says, I'm very disappointed with the way Easton spent its money. Ooh. However, I know, <laughs> and I thought, well, some things never change, <laughs> but how, um, but he provided a second grant. And again, if you, you don't have to be the sharpest architecture eye, but if you're outside, you can see where the first part, then the second part of the Carnegie building. And then of course the addition that was built in the 1960s, which is the main main floor addition. But yes, we are a Carnegie. Yes, it, it said that the today's equivalent would have been like $1.3 million is what that grant was for. Yeah, very, very much so. Probably, uh, probably even more to be honest. <laughs> Well, we could probably keep this. Oh, we can. Yeah, I can say, yes. Because it's such an interesting thing. Yes, oh my gosh. We provide so many services that it's uh, it's really daunting. But uh, we want to thank you for thank coming you. to be with us today and also for all the services you and your staff provide. And, thank you. And, and we're grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll, I'll I mean, if I don't know, do they hold the, is it one o'clock we have to get out or can no. I sit and eat? Okay, okay. So yeah, I can say, no, no, I can tell chat inside. Thank you. So, all right. Well, listen, if there's uh, nothing else for the good of the cause, uh, Jennifer, thank you for um, thank you for being here. <laughs> thanks for being here. Okay. All right. Thanks. See you all next week.